You are listening to The Reference Desk, the Wicomico Library's podcast that connects you to your public library. Welcome back to the Wicomico County Library's podcast, The Reference Desk. It's our link to you, uh, your link to the library. This month is February, and as you may know, uh, February is celebrated as Black History Month, where we acknowledge and celebrate all the contributions that the Black community and Black population has made to society as we know it in the U.S. and around the world as well. It's also Women's History Month, and in the spirit of the occasion, we will be talking about changes and influences that both groups have contributed to our society. Uh, Some of them are well known, and some are a little more obscure, so let's get into it. The first, uh, the most of the examples are going to be black women because I want to celebrate the contributions that women made as well and I figured that was a great way to combine them. The first person we're going to talk about is Sadie Tanner Mossel Alexander and that is a mouthful. She was born in 1898 and she lived 91 years. She just passed away in 1989. Um, She holds the distinction of being the first black woman to graduate with a law degree from Penn Law School. She was the first uh, African-American woman to practice law in Pennsylvania, and she's remembered for her writing. Her work and views are recorded in speeches kept in the Penn archives. The Penn Alexander Partnership School in West Philly is actually named after her. Moving on, um, one of the more well-known ones, uh, a prolific poet in our own times, uh, Maya Angelou. She was an influential speaker in defense and celebration of black culture. Born in 1928, Miss Angelou is remembered for her autobiography, I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings, one of the seven that she penned. She also published three books of essays and several books of poetry. Her works span 50 years, including movies and TV shows. She passed away in 2014, four four years after receiving the Presidential Medal of Freedom from President Obama in 2010. In what can be considered one of the bravest moments of American history, Ruby Bridges is remembered as being the first student to integrate into the, as of then, all-white William France Elementary School in Louisiana. Even in the face of mobs, isolation, and constant danger to a person, Ruby didn't miss a single day of school that year. And she paved the way for integration in public schools, highlighting the importance of perseverance in the face of injustice. In 1999, she established the Ruby Bridges Foundation, whose goal is to promote tolerance and create change through education. Today, she is 68, and she has been made an honorary deputy marshal of ceremony in D.C. in uh, 2000. So one of the more well-known ones, uh, the name Harriet Tubman. It's known by many as the most famous underground railroad conductors. She led roughly 70 enslaved people to the North and freedom, risking personal injury each time she returned. Some of you may know, but then again, you may not. Harriet was born in Dorchester County as Araminta Ross in 1822. When she was around 27 years old, Araminta escaped to Philadelphia alone in in itself a dangerous feat to gain her freedom. At the time, any slave who made it above the Mason-Dixon line was considered free. After gaining her freedom, Harriet, as she was known then, returned to lead her family to freedom, as well as others, ultimately taking 13 round trips and was known to never lose a passenger. During the war, Harriet assisted the Union as a spy and an armed scout. She also worked as a nurse and a cook, too. In this capacity, she guided the raid at Combahee Ferry, liberating over 700 enslaved people. That brings her body count up to 770 if you're keeping count. Harriet Tubman is remembered as an icon of courage and freedom. Around here, where there's a physical, geographical tie to her story, her legacy lives on in a museum that is located in Cambridge, Maryland. If you get a chance to visit, I highly recommend it. We've gone as a family, and the conversations between my boys and myself, though hard, they've been enlightening and fruitful. Another household name you may speak of when you think of civil rights and the movement of civil rights is Rosa Parks. Most school-age children learn about her refusal to move to a seat in the back of the bus to make room for a white passenger. This act of civil disobedience was a catalyst that inspired the Montgomery Bus Boycott, a year-long boycott resulting in a November 1956 decision by the Supreme Court that bus segregation was unconstitutional under the 14th Amendment. Rosa Parks became a pivotal figure in the civil rights movement, working alongside Edgar Nixon and Martin Luther King Jr. to further the cause. After the bus boycott in Montgomery, Parks lost her job and dealt with threats against her person for years after, and it led her to move to Detroit shortly after. In later life, Mrs. Parks to Ms. Parks wrote her autobiography and continued to speak out about the need for more to be done to correct the injustices in this country. She was invested with the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the Congressional Gold Medal, and upon her death in 2005, was the first woman to lie in honor at the Capitol Rotunda. And now we get to the uh, the only male on our list. (laughs) If you've ever been out of the house in a car sometime in the last century, you've likely seen that three-colored light that controls the traffic flow at an intersection. The inventor of the traffic light was a man named Garrett Morgan. He was born in 1877, 
It was the seventh of 11 children to a mother with indigenous and African heritage and a father who had been a slave before the emancipation. And interestingly enough, his father was an officer in the Confederate army. Garrett Morgan, he only achieved an elementary education. His natural aptitude for machinery led him to opening his own shop where he repaired sewing machines. In the process of repairing sewing machines, he noticed that these mechanical sewing machines that were relatively new at the time were so, the needles moved so fast they tended to tear the more delicate fabric, like your satins and your taffetas and stuff like that. And he developed a lubricant that he could put on the sewing needle that would cause it to pass more smoothly through the fabric and less likely to tear. In the process, he realized that the fabric fibers were smoother where the needle passed through them. So he was like, hmm, I wonder. So he took the neighbor's dog, with permission, I believe, and tested the lubricant on the fur of the dog and realized it made the fur nice and shiny and soft. So he ended up actually patenting his own line of hair care products because of a sewing machine. Um, he went on to do many more patents. Um, he very mechanically minded, very clever gentleman. And he ended up patenting the three light traffic light that we know and kind of sort of love and hate today. Our history in this country is made of countless contributions by people of color. If you eat a PB&J sandwich, if you curse at a stoplight, or even if you have heart surgery, you're experiencing firsthand the change many black entrepreneurs, social justice workers, and creative thinkers made. The present is shaped by those who came before us, and like a rainbow, the different colors is what makes it beautiful. I appreciate that you guys took the time to stop and listen to our podcast today. Um, it was a little bit more of an info dump, uh, a little more just talking about history. I love that thing. I love history. But I really appreciate you taking the time to uh, in, just l learn about the different ways that the black community has contributed to our culture because it's been a long road and there's still a long road to go. But uh, I think knowledge is and acknowledging these things is important to us to grow as a community. Don't forget uh, to check out the Beanstack program we have, which is a online interactive, uh, not a game, it's more like just a checklist that you can do and you can have a completion badge. It's all virtual, it's all imaginary, but you learn a lot of stuff through it and it's kind of fun. Um, sometimes there are prizes, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, we also have so many books that you can check out. Uh, they, I know Center Branch here, we have an entire display of books written about black history and for children and adults. And don't forget to check out the storybook room too. We just opened up a new room uh, of the center branch where we have moved all of our children's collection to. We have tables for the adults to sit and use a computer while they, their children play and color and read. Don't forget to check out Hoopla. Don't forget to check out Libby, which is the online application you can download on your phone with a variety of eBooks, audiobooks, uh, and also Hoopla has videos and TV shows and movies and albums. And I don't know how many times I've checked out Encanto so far. And, um, yeah, just feel free to, if you have any questions, you're welcome to call uh, Center Branch or call Sarbanes or Pittsville and ask any one of our staff members, and we'll be able to help walk you through it. If we can't walk you through it over the phone, feel free to come visit, and we'll see what we can do here at the branch. Again, thank you for listening, and we'll uh, maybe see you next time. Bye, guys. Future episodes may feature a variety of topics, ranging from storytelling, arts and crafts, reader's advisory, reference questions, discussion, and more. We also encourage feedback through our Facebook page or in the comment section on the podcast. Visit us online at www.wicomicolibraries.org. Search for Wicomico Libraries on your favorite podcasting site. You can call us at 410-546-5397 or you can email us at center at wicomico.org. That is C-E-N-T-R-E at wicomico.org.